Hey Pitmasters, what is up? Today we're going to do another steak experiment. Well, look at this beautiful coat, the bus that I got right here. Fantastic, crazy amount of marbling, nice amount of fat. They're gonna taste amazing. We are going to use these steaks to find out if searing helps preventing moisture loss. So if we wanna measure moisture loss, the first thing that we gotta do is measure the steaks before we cook them. So we're gonna measure steak number one. There we go, 890 grams. Steak number two, 838 grams. I'm gonna carve one once over the bone. This is steak number one. Look at him, look at the big guy over there. He's eyeballing my steak. Shut up, get out of here. Everything is fed around me. I don't know what it is, Marshall. So this one gets two cuts. I already fired up the Kamado Joe Big Joe. I've set it up to one side indirect heat and one side direct heat. Now the first thing that we're going to do is steer steak number one over direct heat and set steak number two over indirect heat. Once we got a good sear on steak number one, we're going to move it over to indirect heat as well and let them slowly come up to a core temperature of 48 degrees Celsius. A steak is just a steak, Martian. I think we need to add something to it. I was thinking nachos, molten cheese, homemade salsa, and then maybe the steak on top. You got me with cheese. <laughs> I knew it. I was thinking I was thinking you would go for nachos, but cheese, yeah, I definitely got you. I hooked you at nachos and I slapped you with cheese. I've got these beautiful tomatoes and they taste absolutely fantastic. These are snack tomatoes and they put them full with flavor. They got that little pop when you bite into it and all the flavors come out. I love these things, but we got to turn them into a salsa. So we're going to chop them up. Dit is wel een moment dat ik dacht van, wanneer heb ik nou bedacht dat het een goed idee is om al die kleine tomaatjes te gaan snijden? We've been cooking these steaks at a temperature of 160 degrees Celsius. The one that we seared is now at a temperature of 51 degrees Celsius. We're taking it off the grill and we're letting it rest. And our second steak is also done, so we're letting that rest as well. What a beauty. So while the steaks are off, we can focus on melting the cheese on our nachos. Of course, we need enough cheese. So I'm putting on mozzarella and my favorite young Gouda cheese. I may have overdone it a little bit, but hey, you can never have too much cheese, right? So let's put this on the grill over indirect heat and let the cheese melt. Okay, let's finish off our salsa. We're going to chop fine a green bell pepper and a yellow bell pepper. We'll add that to our tomatoes. We'll chop fine some fresh parsley and chives, some fresh ground black pepper, olive oil, and a pinch of salt. We'll mix that all up and our salsa is done. The cheese has melted. So let's take it off the grill. Look at this. Ooh wee. Does that look good, Morrison? Look at this. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Mm. Mm. Before we start building up this plate, I want to check with you guys on the steaks and see how much they lost in weight on moisture. At first glance, I can see that the steak that we sear is shrunken much more than the steak that we put over indirect heat straight away. Of course, it doesn't have the beautiful crust that the seared steak does but let's weigh them. So first, let's weigh steak number one. 674 grams. I'm terrible at math. 216, 216, remember that number. That's the amount we lost on this steak. Second steak. 704, 134. There could be a big chance I'm doing this wrong, but you guys will correct me when required, right? So this one has a weight a moisture loss of 16%. That's number two, 16%. This one has a weight. Are you holding on to your seat, Morrison? Yeah. Two, four percent. So unlike you might've heard, 
searing a sig to capture in the moisture, it doesn't work. Even worse, it helps losing much moisture. 8% more moisture loss on the steer that steak that we seared. It's mind blowing. Morrison, this is going in the wrong direction. So every time we do an experiment like this, it turns out you shouldn't do a thing that people tell you to do. The good news. We have two beautiful steaks. We got two beautiful steaks. Time to get out the Bertoloco. The big knife. Let's slice up some steaks. Oh, this one looks good. So even if we have this big amount of difference in moisture loss, the key thing is, how does it taste? There we go. <laughs> oh my God, this is good steak. Now the seared steak. Mm. Marshall, we have a problem. Try, try the nut seared one first. Juicy. Tender, flavorful, messy. There you go. So here's the second one. The crust is the only thing that but has flavor in it. Yeah. While the other steak, you can clearly taste the beef flavor. So the, basically what we can say is that the moisture and flavor that we lost, it's flavor that we lost. What I'm thinking is because we seared the steak over direct heat, over direct flames, you kind of get like this really, really heavy sear flavor. And if you sear it on cast iron, you get less of that, I don't know, that heavy sear flavor, but you get more of a Maillard reaction. And I'm kind of missing the flavor of the Maillard reaction, but getting too much of a heavy, hard sear. And so I'm thinking, we should have gone with a lighter sear, so we did less effect, we have less effect on the moisture loss, and at the same time still have a little bit of, you know, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of that Maillard effect. And I also think we should be plating up right now. I want to build this up. This is going to be like a party. And now let's put on our steak. Now look at this fantastic platter, absolutely crazy. We got the nachos, we got the cheese, a little bit of salsa, and of course, our steak. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, lucky cat. I got such a lucky cat. Here we go. Mm. Ooh, the cheese and the nachos. Mm. Mm. This is good. Even if these steaks weren't grilled to perfection, we've clearly proven a point with our moisture loss. The dish was really fantastic. Absolutely lovely. The flavors come together really well. The crunchiness of the nachos, the freshness of our salsa, and then the creaminess of our cheese and that beautiful steak. I hope you guys enjoyed the video recipe and I hope you enjoyed the experiment. And if you did, leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. A big thank you to our patrons and our YouTube members. See you guys next time. Until then, keep on grilling and eat smakelijk. Or eat smakelijk and keep on grilling. It's also good.